I ain't, I ain't go all the way for you. Nah. Right. Can I just ask the simple question is, what made you just all of a sudden do a press run right now? You making rounds, mm -hmm. you doing interviews, mm -hmm. well, you on tour one, right now. For one, I I was um I'm, I've been promoting uh the new series. I got a story to tell on BT Plus. Okay. Okay. There we go. All right. But that's just not the only thing. I mean, here's what happens. You you asked about Vlad, right? Mm -hmm. And you said you it felt like it was exclusive, right? Mm-hmm. So whatever I was doing in that aspect has been working. Mm -hmm. So now people like yourself are calling. Right. So while I got something to promote, <clears throat> and I have interesting outlooks on topical things that we discuss on a daily basis in our communities and our culture, why not share this knowledge or mm -hmm. just go back and forth, iron sharp and iron. So I feel like when certain people, when I look at their work and I see the way they actually interact with their guests, and it's interesting enough to where I want to go in there and I want to interact. So I'm here because I want to be here with you, my brother. Damn, I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs>
Mm. Now, if you participate, we all can laugh. You'll laugh too. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's why we do that. That's why comedy is so big in our culture. Mm. You know, and so I laugh at my life some days. Some days I'll just be riding and be like, <laughs> I can't believe I said that. Mm. Wow, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe Roger really tried me like <laughs> Damn, that was funny. Damn, I looked so damn dumb for doing that. Hey, gotta laugh it off sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Be like that. Okay. Uh, next thing I want to say is surrounding yourself around the wrong people. Man, you know, sometimes you be in positions and you know you're around the wrong people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes people be looking for a way in. People be looking for love. People be looking to be, people desire to be desired. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. People desire to be acknowledged. People desire status. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times people will associate themselves with the wrong people for status. Mm. We call it clout. Sometimes it's, it ain't even necessarily for clout. It's they see this as they way in or people just be around people just because they feel like, you know what, you 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 on the same shit I'm on. We on the same time, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes if you ain't on the right time, they ain't on the right time, that's that's still associating with the wrong people. Mm. Even if you on the same wrong shit, but if you associating, if people associating with you and you on the bullshit, they on the bullshit. And if you around them and they on the bullshit, you around the wrong people. Mm. I wanna touch on that a little later, but I'm gonna keep it going. This is an icebreaker. Um, when you hear the word uh, legendary, what, what comes to mind? A lifetime of acknowledgement. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That well, That's when I hear legendary. So when people tell me legendary, when they say, why you legendary? I just be like, okay, appreciate it. But I don't feel like I reached the status of legendary because there's certain things that I, <clears throat> I see or I consider as legendary, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So working towards that as a, as an honor, or to be honored as legendary, I still feel like I gotta work towards that every day. You know what I'm saying? Cause sometimes mm -hmm. just like, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, sometimes in your mind, you haven't made it yet. Mm. But to people around you, they feel like, nah, bro, you done made it. But right. you like, nah, cause when I see <clears throat> something so great or so much more accomplishments ahead. I see something, I see myself, I aspire to be more accomplished than what I see I, I, I am now. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Just like, you know, I'll give you a perfect example. Look, take a Chris Brown, right? How many Grammys Chris Brown got? It don't matter. Yeah. What I say? How many platinum plaques Chris Brown got? A whole lot of them, right? Yeah. So it was one time in his life when people probably was like, yeah, boy, you big. But he is way bigger now than he was then. They was already calling him legendary then. You kind of get what I'm saying. Damn. So in his mind, he wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't full. He wasn't full. He wanted more. He continued to grow and grow and grow. So my as when I speak on me, it's the same type of thought process to me. Like yo, I have some accomplishments, but I want more. I want bigger accomplishments. Mm. You know what I mean? Okay. Few more. Few more. Um, and a, a lot of the stuff we want to touch back on. Yeah. But this is just the, the icebreaker. Radio, what do you think? When the first thing that came to your mind? My pathway to newfound success. Mm. That's what I see. That's what I live every day. 6 to 10 a.m. Young Jock in the streets morning takeover. Five days a week. Syndicated, nationally syndicated. You know, several markets. Radio. There's so much to talk about. We're going to get into it. I'm going to take my time with it. All right. So when it comes, what about uh, Love and Hip Hop? Love and Hip Hop, man. Um, a, collection of, a collection of moments in your life, mm. <laughs> in my life. Uh, you know, <laughs> many clips into the life of, of, of people who are willing to put their life in front of the camera, mm. you know. I see, I see how, I when you say love and hip hop, I just be like, ooh. See, remember we talked about comedy? Mm -hmm. That be the comedy, like, wow. Wow, that just happened on camera, all right? You know what I'm saying? She's, you feel me? 
Yeah. So two two more things. Two more things before we get into it. Um, the hip hop industry. Um. The industry of it. I see a factory. Mm. What does that mean? I see a warehouse. I see a a, a, a distributor. I see a, a a huge belt. It's like a, a assembly line. You know what I'm saying? It's like I see. It's like every day it's a whole new artist. Every day it's a whole new sound. Every day it's a whole new attempt. It's just like I see a factory. I see it being constantly spit out every day. I see it. Some of them make it off the belt line into the stores and into people's homes and into their ears. And some people got to try to do it again. Mm. I really do because it's a, it's a, I see a factory, dog. Cause I see it every day. I've been around long enough in it, like really behind the scenes and understanding it. I see when they start, I see when they take off. Some of them be just soaring. Some of them never take off. Some of them crash. Some of them just disappear. Mm. You know, it just that's what I that's what I see. When you ask that. That's some real shit. Last one. You gotta um, it's the easiest one. You gotta uh, give me your. Top one, ranking from most important to least important. Mm -hmm. Love, respect, loyalty. What gotta come first? Respect gotta come first. Wow. Respect gotta come first. Why is that? Because respect is taught. It's taught. You, you, you hand that down. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Somebody teach you how to respect. Nobody teaches you how to love. So naturally, you would think that's an instinctive thing, love. Mm -hmm. I don't, you can't teach me how to love. Because <clears throat> I could just walk in here and Shadow could just smile a certain way and I could just instantly love her. You can't teach me how to just, I love her. God damn, I love her. I want to know more about her. You can't teach me that. But you got to teach respect. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? And through respect, <clears throat> I think then I want to talk about loyalty. Mm. You, know what I'm you understand what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. in the world we live in, you got to be able to fend for yourself. You got to be able to take care of yourself. If you procreate, you got to be able to take care of yourself and others. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm trying to say? And and loyalty that comes that's people always think of you to someone else. You gotta be loyal to yourself. Mm, that's a fact. Oh my god. Because you gotta you gotta respect yourself enough to maintain a certain lo level of loyalty to yourself at mm. all times, at all times. You you kind of get what I'm saying. Loyalty could be the, your your everyday method of operation, your everyday protocol. When you get up, what's the first thing you do when you get up? What's the first thing you put into your body? What's the first time you put into your brain, whether it's through your eyes or your ears? That's a loyalty to yourself, you know what I'm saying? Then we'll talk about love, because you can't teach that. You, you know, you can't, you can't teach that. People say, I'm gonna teach you how to love, how to properly love, okay. But how do you properly love? Because everybody's love language is different. The way I love on her, if, if, if everybody loved the same, the exact same way, no one would ever break up. It would never be a reason to move on to somebody else. You, you kind of get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't teach love. It's just one of them things. A mother, when a baby, see their mama? You don't gotta teach that baby to love that mama. Mm. That shit, they're off it. <clears throat> I feel like a lot of people say respect first. Um, if I was being honest, I, uh, I'm torn because I never thought about it. like when you touched on loyalty, it made me think about respect because 
every time somebody say respect, it's always about somebody else. Nothing to do with them. It's always about somebody. You don't gotta. You don't. You don't gotta love me. You don't gotta do nothing as long as you respect me. That's all you hear. It's like as long as you respect me. And then when you touched on liberty, I'm like, sheesh. If anything, respect will come first because you should respect yourself. Not to drink because you're trying to get in shape. You should respect yourself to leave a relationship when it's getting too toxic. You should respect yourself to protect yourself, protect your family, like to to to, to go outside presentable. You should you should respect yourself. Everybody, when they say respect, is always about somebody else. What about you, right? So, I would I would agree with respect, but at first I was saying loyalty because if I had to have it my way, yeah. If it was a, like a magic trick or a three wishes type of thing. Loyalty, I would say loyalty because at the end of the day, if you do, respect can be subjective when it comes to outward, right? And if, when it comes to somebody else like shit. You've had, you've seen a lot of things in your career yeah. between the hair shit, the broken bets with dresses and shit. Like you've seen it. Yeah. So what does that mean when somebody don't, like if somebody that you don't know don't respect you, who gives them, like who cares about that? Right. So I would say loyalty first at first before we talk about self respect, because if I had it my way and I can and and I could choose for somebody to be loyalty to me the way I deem loyalty to be, it don't get no better than that because no matter what we disagree on, no matter what we fight about, I know at the bare minimum at the end of the day you got my back. And if you if we fall out today or tomorrow, you gonna have my back the same. And I feel like that shit is something that don't come a lot in in the world. Honestly. I think it, it, it do come a lot. <clears throat> Loisy. It come different in different relationships. Mm. Every relationship different. It's a it's a certain level of loyalty on every relationship you, you make. That's a real relationship. You know what I'm saying? It's mm. a level of loyalty there. And when you use the word subjective, to say which one of those three things that we just talked about, whether it's respect, love, or loyalty, that shit's subjective on what's first. Because, mm -hmm. nigga, if you wake up in the morning, it's somebody on the other side of the world. They, they, it's daylight. It's daylight there. It's dark here right now. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's like it's a, like a wheel of evolution. It just keeps going. It's right. a revolution, I should say. It just keeps revolving, bro. You know what I'm saying? It, it don't matter which one come first in real life. Mm. If you really want the truth, no, nah, facts. If you right. really don't, I heard somebody say, um, just yesterday, Mandy. She was like, "Like is is a stronger word than love. It's a stronger feeling than love. When somebody like you, that's stronger than somebody loving you." And I was like, "Damn, I think I might agree with that." subjective you think so yeah because we got family members that we don't like but we love them there's some people who got I got some people who got kids that they don't like they fucking kids but they love them yeah there's some kids who don't like their parents but they love them nah. now to say I like you you could put everything aside because it's easier for me to like you than love you in real life, so I, I could like you, but I don't love you. I like bro, but I don't love you enough to come burn you out. Mm. I like bro, but I can't let you borrow. Pull your mic, pull your mic. I, I, I like bro, but I can't let you borrow the fifteen hundred. I don't love you enough, but I like you. This is true. She I was, like you. <clears throat> this is true. I like you, but I don't love you enough to bring you where I lay my head. Mm. I guess when she was saying it, we was talking about like more so the relationship aspect of it. And if you think about it, right, when you, it seems like somebody can love you and do you so dirty. Somebody can love you, they can cheat on you, they can treat you bad, they can talk to you any type of way. When somebody like you though, oh, that'd be the best stages of the, uh, that'd be the best stages ever. Like somebody like you, they, they want to see you all the time. They want to talk to you nicely. They want to be the best version of themselves. But it's like as soon as somebody start loving you, that's when it get hard. It get complicated. You know why? Why? Because love comes with a connotation <clears throat> of longevity, mm. eternity, 
You know what I'm trying to say? Mm. If love feel like eternity, love feel like you're going to be here forever. And that's why sometimes people become complacent. They could love you, but they become complacent because love love is kind of is, is connotated with eternity. Mm. She loved me. She ain't going nowhere. Man, them people love me, bro. They ain't, they ain't gonna fuck with me. <clears throat> but the hood love me. They ain't gonna fuck with me. Then until the shit started happening, he was like, damn, why I thought these niggas love me. Cause it feel like eternity. You know what I'm saying? To like you, to like you, I might not even put myself in the position for us to have no bad blood. Cause I like, bro, I like you so much, I ain't only I don't even want to do no being with you. Mm. Not I love you so much. I, but I like, I like, bro. I don't even wanna. It's just like a girl and a guy. You man, I, I just like her. That's my home. She, when you like her, she just become your home girl. Cause you just like her. I don't like her like I like you. I just like her. Shout her cool. I f with her. She got a boyfriend. He he treat her right. They cool. I like them. Even for each other, they they cool. I like you. When you love somebody, that shit feel like it's got to be forever. Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy, David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created The Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now, listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now... You got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I see you there. It seemed like when you love somebody, the respect go out the door. Just hearing you say it because I need more people to like me. Because like me enough not to do business with me because you know you might fuck it up. Like me enough to not argue with me because you know you might go across the line. When somebody love you, it's like y'all getting arguments, hit below the belt. They saying things out of hurt. It's like, nah, like me enough not to do it because like I don't even want to go there with him. I feel like it should be switched. Like, damn. I think people have to know the difference. That's the problem. Because people can like something so much that they, they mistake it for love. Mm. Damn, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? That went over my head for, at first. Fact. I'm sorry, but that's... You that's, think you love somebody, but you don't. Yeah, come on. How many times you didn't really love somebody? Mm. I ain't gonna know, man. Oh my god, I love that nigga. Oh my, she don't love a nigga. Oh, she don't love a real nigga. Then one day you be like, man, fuck that. Man. You be over that shit. Then you be like, where did the love go? I don't know. Facts. But when you see her again, and she's still fine, be like, but I like that. But you ain't gonna say I like that though. You gonna say, but I love that bitch. No, you just like that bitch. You don't love mm. her. Speaking of love, man, how long you been married? Uh, two years in November. It only been 10 years? How is it going, man? How is that? Hey, man, you know, it's going good. In real life, it's going good. I mean, you know, to even make the commitment as serious, make a commitment as serious as marriage, man. You know, I was married for 12 years before. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And most men will tell you when after they first marriage, the average guy is going to be like, I'll never get married again. So when I even spoke on the concept of marriage or second marriage, a lot of the homies were like, boy, ain't no way I'll get married again. Mm. Well, if you ain't never understood marriage or, or endured a marriage before, then I expect you to say that. Because on the, from the outside looking in, you're looking at so many, so many freedoms taken away from you. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So just a man, you out here, you can just live your life. Let's just, you come to Atlanta. Everywhere you look, it's a beautiful woman. Nah, for sure. Everywhere. And it's beautiful, successful women. Yeah, it's different. Accomplished yeah. women. Mm -hmm. Even if they popping a little bit with the, the real success and a little, it's a little more yeah. embellished. Yeah, yeah. People flex, you know, you gotta market what you do, you know. You, you know, 
and guys feel like they could just have their way. You just do this. You you, you don't got to come home to nobody. You don't got to answer to nobody. You don't got to answer to nobody. <laughs> There's a lot of things that you are willing to sacrifice to be able to live that bachelor lifestyle. And I get it, right? But then when you get to a certain point in life, if you're really trying to accomplish certain certain things in life, just it's, it's, how, it's what your it's subjective. It's what your vision of life as you want it to be. So if you're the person that wants to be married and want to have a companion and a, and, and somebody that, that that rubs your back on days you down and, and 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 it be reciprocated on days they down, when you need to be uplifted, when you need that companionship, somebody to really understand who you are and y'all work together and y'all can achieve a good life, a good lifestyle, harmony. Hey man. It's a it's an okay thing. It's a good thing if you if that's what you desire. If that's what you want. If that's what you want. So let me ask you this. Been married twelve years, right? Mm hmm And in that, where do you think it goes wrong? Um <clears throat> the commitment to commitment. Damn. Cause we commit to things all the time, right? Every year, we what's the running joke? New Year's, everybody getting in the gym. gym. I'm doing better. I'm How long stop are you still drinking and left. But, but you start this commitment. You make the commitment, the initial commitment. But in order to be considered successful, you, you have to consistently <laughs> commit to your commitment. Mm. And that's the thing. A lot of times, when we lose the desire to commit to the commitment. It all goes left. But no, nah, no, nah, you ain't about to just give me that, man. That's that's cool. That's cool. Now, I mean, I just, that's I just gave it to you. Though. Okay. No, nah, no. Nah. Okay. Where does it go wrong when it's like you stop liking that very thing you mistook for love? You stop liking people. Mm. You stop liking the the whole concept of s sacrificing this lifestyle or other things I could be doing. You know. You know when you stop liking somebody. You just stopped liking them. And I'm not saying I stopped liking my ex-wife. It wasn't I stopped liking her. I just felt like we were on two different paths at that point in life. I was older, you know, by, by a few years. And we were just on two different paths. Mm. By the time we got to a point in our relationship and our marriage where we could really work, once we realized, we are like, you know what? We, we we started as friends. How do we get back there? Mm. And you start realizing we gotta take certain things away. And maybe that was our commitment to trying to be in this marriage when we was better off as just friends. Although we have created a family and we have kids. It's a it's sometimes it's a hard conversation to have. That's just like me right now. If I come in here to have a conversation with you to try to get you to sign some life insurance to sign. Let, you know, you got some money. You got some money in your bank account right now, right? Mm -hmm. You already got a plot where you gonna lay at when you die. No. You don't. Most niggas don't. Most people don't. <clears throat> Cause it's an uncomfortable sit. It's an uncomfortable conversation. It's like y'all don't want to jinx it. And what happens is people are scared to communicate after they stop liking the situation. You might just stop liking the idea of marriage. Mm. What what happens when you stop liking the idea of marriage? You don't want to do it no more. Man, I don't even like this game no more. I used to love the hell out of this game. I don't even like this game no more. Like, bro, you don't want to play Madden? You play video games? No, I wish. I'm just saying. So I just, want to. Just think. <laughs> niggas be loving these games. Yeah. But when a new game come out mm -hmm. and it's new and improved, new marketing, get rid of that shit. new money get put, put behind it, guess what happens? You stop liking the older version of it. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So even the person that you in this commitment with, they got to be committed to always pleasing you and vice versa. Think about it. Think about the, the pleasure rate that I, I got to have with the person I'm married to. Think about how much somebody can annoy you because you are committed to them. Mm. The way they want to live, the way you want to live, the way y'all live together. It's it's a whole different set of 
storyboards. You get what I'm trying to say? So when you when they when you stop when you don't like the, the, the concept of what we doing no more, ah, you just lose the will to fight for it. So it was an interesting conversation that I thought went actually I think it was your last interview we did Big Facts. Okay. They asked you I think Big Bang asked you, um, any like relationships where like you were wrong. And you be like, eh, you can't really call it, right? Some more accountability. Because you just asked at that moment. Because mm -hmm. when you've been wrong so many times, bro, you can't just instantly go to who you did wrong. Yeah. Or where you may have been wrong. But forget that question. If we can go back to a yeah, relationship of 12 years, if you could look at yourself in the mirror and be like, man, I needed to grow or mature as a man, mm -hmm. what would it be? Well, I wouldn't have cheated as much. Mm. I wouldn't have cheated, you know, but I cheated out of stop liking certain things. Mm. You know, there were certain things that I wanted in my marriage. I wasn't getting it. You know what I'm trying to say? And I was, and a lot of times that was the growth of the, the woman that I was with. She was growing, but here I am, I'm getting millions of dollars and I'm like, hey, you can do anything you want to do. And it was like she was never at that time in her life that time span, she never wanted to step out. She wanted to do things, but she didn't want to step out and do it on her own or independently. It's mm. like she wanted to be an entrepreneur, kind of, sort of. But, okay, so let's say perfect example. Here I am. It's, it's probably going to sound so so silly, but let's give you a perfect example. She's like, hey, I want to be in this this. I want to be in this this, uh, this company. That it's, it's a model company. I said, oh, okay. Model agency, okay. All right. That's whatever. So then when she came, she was like, yo, I got to pay them like 5000 to be in it. I was like, for what? You got to pay them? I thought they wanted you, so you got to pay them. She's like, yeah. All right, pay them if that's what you want to do. So when I suggest, oh, why don't you just, this? do you want a model or you want the model agency? She said both. I said, okay. Well, you know, it's a lot of women around that we got. It's a it's a, it's a a constant flow of these people. If you want to do your own thing, you can always say, no, nah, I don't want to do my own thing. Okay, cool. It, every time there was an opportunity for her to do her own thing, she just didn't want to do it. And I was just like, cool with that. I wasn't even tripping. But when it turned into situations where it just felt like, it was a, a lack of ambition. Mm. It it didn't push me to want to continue to be ambitious because it's like it was certain things would happen. If I talked about whatever I was working on, my successes, like early on, she would cry because she felt like she wasn't pulling her weight. Mm. But I'm like, you pulling your weight? You my wife? The kind of money we making, you don't have to you don't have to trip on that. But it got to a point where. <clears throat> It's like I wasn't being stimulated no more by my wife. This was somebody that was my friend. I wasn't being stimulated because in the conversation, the back and forth no longer stimulated me to. It's certain nutrients in the combo in communication that you pass, you know, the nutrients, you know, the understanding, the, level, the frequency. And when you're not getting those nutrients, through that transaction, the mm -hmm. frequencies, you just you be seeking elsewhere for it. And that's just what it is. I'm mean, mm -hmm. just because I don't want to be. I don't. Wanna, I ain't coming to bash nobody, especially not my ex wife. We cool. I don't. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like she could probably say some things that could be spicy as fuck and go viral. I could too, but that ain't what I came here for on that side of things. You know what I mean? No, fact. So you think less about her, more about you, and like the introspective of it. Like you think as a man. You could have did a better job at like communicating that to her instead of stepping up. Well, I still try. I did try to communicate it. It was just a lot. It was just a, a period of time. It's just I wanted. It. You know how you say you want. When we say we want things on paper, mm -hmm. you know you want this, that, that in your wife. Uh, it was certain things that I didn't have, right? But I never took the time to step back and say, well, <clears throat> what can I do better to make this better? It was just like, well, this is what it is. I, I, I stayed in the relationship. She ain't want for nothing. Hell, she ain't had to work for a long time. You know what I'm saying? But after a while, I just felt like it was just like, 
I don't know. I wasn't. I, I wasn't. I just wasn't. I ain't had a spark no more, man. That's all. You think the the TV shit made it better? Like or it hurt? Well, by the time the TV shit came in, I was separated. You've been doing love and hip hop for like. I understand, and I ain't. I was. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah. Damn. So I, I got married when I was twenty three, bro. Damn. Yeah. So you count twelve years. I'm forty three. Yeah, that's. See, that would have been this, this year would have been twenty years. So how do you think the TV shit helped with like new relationship? Like you think that? I mean, that helps. So it's like that shit gotta be hard. It is extremely hard, boy. So why you put yourself in that situation? Because I can handle it. I probably handle it better than half of the people you ever seen on TV doing that on reality TV. And I say that because that's why I'm able to stick around. Cause see, I don't be internalizing that shit. You know, if you ever see me kind of look unhappy, it's on TV, on the show. And you really don't see me look unhappy on the show, for real, for real. For real, for real. Even if I'm ha unhappy, you don't know it, you don't see it. You know what I'm saying? This last season, I had some very unhappy moments because of the way shit was coming out, nigga. But you, if you know me in real life, you don't see me unhappy like that. So I'm not too sure about the TV show shit. I don't really watch it that much. But then you have, like, what's some shit going on with, like? Come on with the shit, no. I, cause I don't, want, I don't, cause nah. I'm curious. I don't know if it was right or not. Right. Okay. But it was like some shit with your wife with the TV shit too, or like some, I don't know, if some cheating allegations. I don't know. Like, I don't know. nigga, I'm say not. what you gonna say. Nigga, I don't know. I'm trying to say it because I really don't know. I'm telling okay. you, nigga, I wouldn't say what the. I must, I must say it. Me? I, believe, I know you. I must say it for it. sure. I, I just don't know, so I'm trying. I just, to we, just been, we just been real chill. Oh no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Shit. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm just like, know. so that happened. Wait, come on, bro. So that happened. What on Love and Hip Hop with some cheating shit. Yeah. What the? F so when are you gonna learn then? I oh, that wasn't that wasn't true. I learned. This time. I learned. Ah oh, shit. Cause bro, you ain't being specific, so I mean. Nah, nigga, you would know. I don't know. So if I'm saying something, and you know it. Say it. So you, you the radio guy. So I, wanna, I don't want to just throw it out there, buddy. <laughs> Fuck is wrong with you? He just asked me how you keep your shit happy at home. Motherfucker, <laughs> dodge stupid ass questions like that. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, no, no. Matrix. What? Outside of, no, forget everybody else, though. I'm talking about you. I'm in, I'm talking to you man to man. on Because I'm, 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 I'm 31. All right, let's I can talk. learn from it. So what you want to know? You said you wouldn't have cheated in your last relationship. Right. Okay, so... One of the things that, that was pushed on that last season was the narrative that I had been involved with Mita excuse me, for all this time. And the time frame that she was alleging her and I was messing around overlapped with the time frame of Kendra and I publicly being in a, in a relationship, or I should say in a relationship publicly. Mm -hmm. So that time frame overlapped. So that caused a lot of tension and friction because it started to be like, so she was around all this time? This the same woman you told me that, yeah, you was honest and told me you messed with her, but she called you because she looking to spend a million dollars to buy a house? And you was like, well, shit, I passed the number on to my wife and she called you, she called you, she don't, she don't. I did that. That was just some real shit. I, I was just like, you know what? I ain't fucking with you no more. I ain't cheating. This ain't the season with me and Katie and Carly and I got the realtor showing my girlfriend got down you know, me and my girlfriend in the house and I'm fucking the realtor. This wasn't that season. You see what mm -hmm. I'm trying to say? So that shit didn't it didn't play out like that. But because I've had a season like that, it's kind of like uh, the probability is very high. You know what I'm trying to say? So some shit just follow you. So when it got when when this season hit with that them allegations. It just made it, it shit made shit really look crazy, but it really wasn't nothing. It was a fucking text message. So why do you continue? Why do you put yourself in that? Like, I hey ain't brother, gonna, that gotta be hard. But guess what? Imagine this. Imagine you are on a show. That's the furthest thing from your mind, and you start to hear rumors that the oh boy, it's, it's boy, somebody on the show talking about. Well, who is this somebody? 
and you don't know. They don't know. Nobody's saying nothing. Everything's a confidentiality, but rumors is starting to come around. And then you get in a scene with a motherfucker, and you like, what? Oh, shit. And they, they throw some shit out there, and you caught off guard. You, I mean, I didn't come out to the world and say, hey, it's a possible chance that I was cheating. Hey, man, there's a, there's a rumor about the start that I was cheating with this chick named Mita. Like, nah, I, I'm a, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do that. So that's on them. She brought that to me. I didn't bring that home. She brought that situation to life. You see what I'm saying? I feel you. It's just... I just feel like that I, that wouldn't be the farthest thing on my mind because these shows are specifically built off of plots that's going to hurt your career so, for the sake of entertainment for everybody else. You may think that. My career's striving. <clears throat> I mean, in real life, just because you don't know the numbers, you don't know how much money I make, there's no concerts for you to say, oh, he's getting this a concert or he's getting this a show. You don't know. Mm. I'm 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 doing great. I'm doing great. I'm in movies. I'm on TV, radio. I still got a catalog that generates revenue. You kind of get what I'm saying? This is true. So, and they pay good. So outside of the monetary value of it, right? Yeah. Do you think this hurts your legacy as Young Jock, or it helps build it? Man, at the end of the day, let me tell you what. People love a good struggle story. Mm. If we didn't, they would never show the before and afters. You ever notice somebody could show you the after, but you don't really appreciate the after all the way until you see the before? You mm. get what I'm trying to say? Mm. That's the whole reason we show you before and after. Because we can see somebody I'm like, oh, okay, now nah, show me the before. Let me see how far it came. Show me the progress. Show me the evolution. That's what people want to see. Mm. And you can't tell a good story without the evolution. You feel what I'm saying? Because before you was in this nice facility right here with this good team with you around here, these cameras, cameras and cameras and people here working. Yeah, we were shooting on the iPhones. Yeah. The show with no lights. Yeah, <laughs> shit was dusty. You ain't got a bell out shit in the back. Right. I'm not saying your shit was dusty. I'm not saying no, it was dusty. It's cool. See, okay, you said it. <laughs> it's cool. So, that, but when you tell your story, you got to be able to show the transition. So for people, me just, I, my transition may just look way more rockier and shakier, and it's way more transparent because it's in the forefront. But let me tell you one thing about humans, people, you, me's, the thems, the people watching. We all go through shit every day, bro. And if they couldn't relate to that shit, they wouldn't watch that shit. Mm. That's the realness of it. People relate to that shit. That's why they flock to that shit. Because they can can damn near defy the realms of they fucking they reality by watching your reality. They shit go out the window. It's just like it's like I could put my shit on the back burner for a minute. It's just like I could drink to to, to drink the bullshit of my day away. I could smoke to to get over, you know, my day. Or I could watch this other drug, this TV show. It's a drug for some people, bro, because they can relate to it. Or they just need to be entertained, man. This is facts, but. You keep talking about this butt. What the butt? Because answer my question. My question is. Give it to me again. Do you think reality TV fucks up your legacy as young jock? Man, man, let me tell you something. Not about everybody, what they see it as being a drug. Do you think? Hey, bro. You ever see a nigga walk out the door and you be like, man, what the f- what in the fuck boy they got on? Why do this man look like this? You actually came out the house looking like that. Mm-hmm. And you be saying to yourself, he got to know better, right? That's just your opinion, bro. That man feel great about himself when he stepped out the door. When he looked in the mirror, he the freshest nigga gonna be in the building tonight. When he walked out the door, he felt so good about himself. Fuck what you think. So what that means is you got to live your life accordingly however you choose to bro mm-hmm. and that's just what it is because the legacy gonna be what the legacy gonna be one thing they're gonna say bro I know how to get up through there that's what you kind of get what i'm saying because when you go to my side of music did it was yeah. it messy was it messy it wasn't messy. okay i've been on radio now morning radio number one morning show in atlanta and syndicated have i been messy though no no 
Okay. So this is just one lane where you see not even me being messy, just a part of a lot of mess. You kind of get what I'm saying? So my legacy ain't just based on me being on a TV show. Mm. If you want to attribute, you know, attribute the things that you see on the show as the biggest part of my legacy, then so be it. Mm. You can feel how you want to feel. Guess what? Who the biggest rapper out right now? Shit, you can't ask me. I don't know. Lil Baby. Maybe. Okay, take Lil Baby for example, right? One of the hardest to ever do it, right? Mm -hmm. But it's somebody in his comment section that don't like what he do. Mm. It's somebody in his comment section that don't appreciate him or his legacy. It's somebody in his comment section that hates everything about him. That's life, bro. You kind of get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you can't get caught up in what nobody say, no matter how big it look or how grand it appears to be. You can take Lil Baby and sit him in front of some people who could give a fuck about him rapping and being this awesome ass cat out of Atlanta. They don't care. It don't matter. So all I'm saying to you is, I, you, I can't care about what nobody think about what I, what they seeing on a TV show. Cause what you gonna see, you still gonna see growth. I'm still intelligent. I still got some sense. I'm still witty. I'm still smart. Mm. I'm still a good guy. That's true. So when you take when you take that and sit that aside, what else you gonna put against me from the TV show? Other than I may have had a, a, some run-ins with women. What else? I ain't killed nobody, I ain't robbed nobody. You ain't never seen me do no dope. You ain't never seen me smoke no dope. You ain't never seen me drunk. You ain't never seen me put my hands on a woman. You ain't never seen me abuse my child or a child. Have you? No. So what else you gonna say that's gonna harm my legacy? You tell me. I can't tell you nothing, I don't know. I'm just... Okay, so that's what I'm saying. So did that void out your question? It don't void out of question. Yes, I, 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 that, that's what I'm saying. In, in my, if you asked me the oh. question of what I thought about it, I just laid it out for you. So it voids out the question of do I think it will harm my legacy? I don't, you don't care? Even if, even if I don't care, I do care. But I don't think it's that bad. Because I just asked you, where is it that bad? And you said you don't know. You can't tell me. Because I, I gave you some real facts. Right? And then I laid out some things I have done and I have never done. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking you, where does it hurt my legacy? So I, I don't know, cause I'm not that invested in it like that. But what I'm saying is I think I'm looking at the majority of people, right? And when we look at artists that like was legendary at one time or whatever the case may be, I feel like the majority, I feel like a lot of our legends get overlooked because of what they into now. No. That's let, my opinion. No, let me tell you what happens with our society, our culture. Right. You 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 don't have a very long shelf life. We treat we treat entertainers like perishables, like mm -hmm. perishable items in our culture of hip hop. You kind of get what I'm saying? You go to a, a ACDC concert, you go to one of these legendary kids concert you got a, a, a 72 year old white guy here with his six year old grandson. Mm. Cause they keeping that legend alive. They keeping the legacy alive. We have a problem with keeping our legends alive because we gonna gravitate to what's the next hottest thing. And we start feeling like right now, you can take somebody who was hot last year. They don't have a song out by November these kids gonna say they fell off. But wait, they didn't fall off, they still, when that song come on, you know that shit word for word, you love it. Mm -hmm. You still gonna sing it, right? It still move you, you still feel good. But why you say they fell off? Cause they ain't putting no music out. It takes time to produce good music sometimes. Mm -hmm. But that's the mindset of, of our culture. You, you see what I'm saying? So we don't really, I don't think we just uphold our legends like that. I feel like it took some time for you to learn that though. I feel like you always knew that? Like you I, always felt that way from the you beginning? You gotta understand. So like right now, I could see somebody when I was, before I even got on, when I was a young cat, I, I'm I'm a part of the culture. Mm -hmm. Well, I might see somebody and say, oh, that's such and such. That ain't that hot no more. But I still respect them. But did you feel like you were gonna be that? I feel like when you in it, it's never that easy. I bro, that's life, bro. Everybody's not gonna be Jay-Z. Facts. Boy, every, everybody that opened well, their mouth ain't life for a second. I'm saying, you specifically how you felt. It had to be a time I'm where you were like, you. Like what? I'm like, like what? I ain't gonna be them. Like, yeah, they fell off, but that ain't gonna be me. No. No? No. 
That's just like you saying, oh man, home died. That ain't gonna be me. We all gonna die one day, my boy. Mm. That's I'm true. never, I'm not finna be 60 years old fucking rapping. Mm. I knew that as a kid. As much as I love doing it, it's other things in life I wanna do. Mm. And like now I'm doing it. Like fuck, I, like bro, guess what? I don't gotta run behind rappers to be around them. You never see me be around rappers in my career, have you? No. Attach me to a rapper. I can't. Attach me just, I, 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 you can't attach me to that. You can't attach me to nobody. When you think of Jock, you think of me. You might say bad boy, but you don't. You didn't see me in a bunch of pictures with Diddy. You didn't mm -hmm. see me in a bunch of pictures with bad boy artists. When you see Jock, you see Jock, mm -hmm. right? M -M <laughs> it's so funny, bro, because I just feel like this. Let me just say this. Anything that I put my mind to, anything that I've put my mind to in the last 20 years of my life, I've gotten what I wanted out of it. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? And until you can say things like that, you don't really understand life. Mm. Ain't none of this shit forever, bro. Ain't none of this shit forever, none of it. Even your legacy, something is one day. Dang. You know, think about let's 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 think about what what year is this? Twenty three, two thousand twenty three. You how? I'm thirty one. Humans been around for how long? I don't know. Well, that, for that's, us, to, for actually us, not even that long. It's but, crazy. But but for us to sit here in front of a mic, for the lights, cameras, this shit can record. You know how many other, how many years and decades ago people have existed they have they gone we all gonna go ain't none of this shit forever so right now you're in your prime somebody gonna talk about you one day boy mm -hmm. hey man that was this cat man that shit might be in a book you read a book about you you know depending on how great you become it's people that are dead right now they don't know it's a school name after them you know what i'm saying George Floyd doesn't know that his family got that much money from his death. George Floyd does not know <clears throat> that his death was one of the many deaths that helped spark a movement across the nation to change certain laws. Breonna Taylor does not know that because of her death, no-knock warrants are no longer legal. Mm. You kind of get what I'm saying? Some things that we consider, you don't, Bro, you don't even know. Half of the things we working for, we don't even, it's like me saying, that's why you here to say, I'm gonna give your flowers today. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people get their flowers after, after they long gone. So you don't even know, that's why when you ask me about, when you speak the word legendary, when you ask me about my legacy, I'm like, shit, the legacy might be carried on after I die. It might be, the real legacy might start when I die. That's all I was saying. It no, took us a sure. long time to get to this moment, but. That's why we continue to. We just breaking barriers, bro. Yeah, it's yeah. just really, it's crazy because a lot of times people, I feel like sometimes people get so lost in the knowledge that they acquired that they forget about the feelings that they once felt, right? And I try to tap into the feelings that even if you not, if you don't feel that way right now, right? Feel like you you very educated. You got so much um, knowledge because you've been in the game for a minute, and even when you got out the game, you transitioned. To still kind of being in the game just in a different way right and i'm really speaking of the jock when it wasn't as fruitful right like when you was making the the hot songs and eventually it stopped right like in those moments like where do you think it went wrong and, and and when it did go wrong how was you feeling did you was you feeling good like man that wasn't gonna last forever i knew that i feel like i i just feel like i would be a fool to say you were feeling like that and that was i just feel like sometimes you have to just realize that Again, I've always been the person to say everything not gonna last forever, bro. Mm. You know, I, I've I've known that from a child, from a kid, because it's like you say, it was things that I was into as a child that by the time I became a teenager, just a preteen, I went into no more. Mm. From being a teenager to becoming an adolescent, it's shit that I wasn't into no more that I love to do. No matter how much I love to do this and how much it changed my life, how much money I've made. Oh, Bro, the shit don't let you, I watch, I see. We, we, we look at biopics, biographies, lifetimes, behind the scenes shit, and we see this shit happen every day, bro. Mm. Why don't you think that you could be one of those people? 
Now you wish to be one of those people who can continue to who continue on to be your Jay Z's, your Beyonce's. That's where I was gonna go. But but everybody don't aspire to be that. Everybody, even though some people think they want that, one of the reasons they don't get that because the shit that comes with it and what it takes to do that, you don't have it in you. Mm. And that's okay. That's okay. Because you realize, it's just like right now, nigga, if you get in the gym, you think you could do 25 reps of that straight. You like, I could do that. But today, you can't. And when your ass run out, I don't give a fuck how much you want to win, how much you want. You can't get it up. You can't get it up, boy. If it ain't in you, it ain't in you at that moment. That's just what it is. It don't mean you can't come back and do it differently. <clears throat> so I don't. I never felt like, even when it when the music, I would see it. When my music start, I start putting other artists out. Mm. Then when I and when my music, as far as me putting it out, the music still live on. I still do shows. I still get sync licenses. I just got two sync, three sync licensing deals in the past week for music I did fucking almost twenty years ago, bro. You you know what I'm saying? So certain things you don't you don't see it as the outside see it because you see your money, and if you still know how to keep it moving, yeah, it may look different to the world because they don't even know how you making your money. But if you can pay your bills and you understand how you keep your shit handled, it don't that shit don't even matter. So when you feel like falling off, man, everybody don't see falling off the same. Hmm. This shit ain't working from this angle. Let me step over here. Nigga, when the sun out, if you stand in a certain spot, the shade good on you, ain't it? Mm. But as the earth rotate and the sun got them do what it do, orbit around, guess what? The shade start to change. You got to move with it. You feel what I'm trying to say, bro? This shit, it, it's like that. You got to figure out how to, where you comfortable at. Some animals like the shade. Some animals want the sun. Some animals can't live outside of the cold. And you gotta understand that whatever your being is, bro, you not gonna always be in the same position. That's just what it is, bro. That's hard. I think I like I, there's a lot to learn in, in that message. I think some artists, a lot of times, what happen is like things don't go right. They try to force it. They try to start to force it, and then just continue not to go right. But like you saying, I mean, if you understand that, then you kind of like just maneuver it to something else. So you can continue to be successful. And you start you, st you start <clears throat> growing, bro. Let me tell you what happened. When you sit back and realize, as an entertainer, I have to be considered entertaining mm. for me to be considered successful. Because if I'm trying to entertain you and I'm not entertaining you, then what am I doing? It's just a hobby. It's not a job if I ain't getting paid for it. And if you're not really working, then you're not making money. It's not, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to just say this, real simple. When you realize people have to like you, as an entertainer, it's a very hard job. Just as I just told you, as kids, the people who like you today, as they grow older, they fade out. People die. People change. People be put in positions where they... Just think about all, if I could just take all the fans from the day one, from when Jock Drop is going down. Where are those people now? You're talking about almost 20 years later. You gotta continue to evolve. So, you got, so the next people to come, you gotta start, they gotta rock with you, they gotta love you, they gotta like you for you to keep, keep going, right? Mm -hmm. Think about this, if I go do colleges right now, if I go stand in front of a college crowd, but I'm, I am old school. It's fucking eighteen year old kids, nineteen year old kids. You probably can still get in going down. You might can still get that out. What I'm telling you, no, nah, because they was they was babies, <clears throat> they was babies, and the music still play, and their parents played the music around them even as babies, so they know it still. You as a kid, but it's certain it's music you still know. Yeah, facts. But if you go see them in concert, you be like, damn, <clears throat> you don't really know all the words, you don't know enough words to heard the stuff, or you. You know this person because they still put music out, maybe? That shit is real, bro. People, they grow. Mm -hmm. Right now, you ain't wearing the same type of clothes you were wearing 10 years ago. No, not really Right cool. now, you probably ain't even attracted to the same type of chick you were 10 years ago. Not even close. You kind of get what I'm saying? The same mm -hmm. shit don't excite you today. You know, you, you kind of get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Somebody hit you right there and be like, bro, oh my God, bro, you got to pull up. But it be so packed, boy, wall to wall. 
Crazy. You might be saying to yourself, I would just rather go to a lounge. I just want to stay at home. I'm going to go in the house. You See? Like, See? Nigga, like, you got to come outside. No, Somebody just invited you out tonight, and you like, oh, <laughs> man. I, I witnessed it for myself. Yeah, nah. See? So you think, would you? is it fair to say you outgrew it then? Sometimes, yeah. I've said it. Mm. I outgrew it. It's certain shit I don't want to do. I don't want to have to pretend. Think about how many people are just pretending. They just put on an act as an entertainer. Mm-hmm. This character you see is a, is an act. They say it's them. Man, you is pushing yourself to follow this thing. You got the slang. You creating it. You pushing it. Whatever you saying, you trying to create new sayings. Every time you do something, you're, create, you're trying to create something new for people to love and recite. Mm. Right? A lot of this shit is, 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 is acting. Keep it 100 with you. So after a while, I don't want to keep sitting here trying to act like I'm cooler than you. Then the next new nigga after you, I gotta be just as cool or cooler then. People, you just outgrow it sometimes. Some of the yeah. some of the work that go in, you don't want to do it. That's I don't want to be no studio rap no more, boy. I don't want to go to work and sit in the in, in the studio all day long and all night long. I don't want to do that no more. That's you gonna have to do that if you're trying to goddamn be on top, be that man. When you talking about putting out record, how much music niggas gotta record to come with hits? Think about it, bro. Mm. Think about how much work you gotta put into it. <clears throat> Think about how much work they go into that. I don't. I don't feel like doing all that shit no more. No, that's just me true. though. It's a nigga my age right now who probably came out when I came out. They like shit. The best thing ever happened to me, boy. And I get it. There's a couple of niggas in your in your class that's still making music. But is it working? Successfully. Is it working? Name them. I think. Name them right now. Two Chains was in your class? Okay. What was Two Chains' last hit record? That's his hit record. I, I ain't talking. But he's still hitting. Two Chains, he legendary. He, All right, then. But pa- what I'm talking about is new music. And I ain't could, talking I about. I think you talking about. Could, see, because we drop something right now and it'll be hot. Okay. What was the last record he dropped that was hot? I don't know. I thought he dropped a uh, project not too long ago. I don't know. Okay. So what was the hit off the project? Like, I don't know. This ain't no quiz on me. This is your interview. Tell me. I'm Somebody at, Google I'm, it. Look it up. Oh, no that's all I'm saying. And I'm not saying that don't mean he didn't drop good music. I'm not saying he didn't drop good music because I've listened to his last two projects, his last three projects. Who else? And I, because I'm a fan of Two Chains and T- I like the music. But wait, and I like the music. I like Two Chains music for sure. But is it cutting through right now? If he drops something, I'm sure. Go to the next one. Give me T- somebody I else. Just drop something. What he just drop? It was some responses. It was cool. People liking it. What you gonna say? Ti still got it. Ti is legendary. Of course, he still got it. But what was Ti's last number one hit from Ti? Right, but sometimes we don't no. Need. Fuck all that. Tell me that. I don't know. Some okay, don't you can't tell me. You asked me a question. Who do, who's still doing it? I'm talking about who's still doing it from that class that's doing it. That's on fire. That's that can go and hang with Champagne Poppy, Lil Baby, <laughs> Lil Dirt. A lot of people right can't now. hang with them though. Right? Yeah. I'm, but what I'm what, what, what I'm saying is, although you could take your Ti, <laughs> Jesus, Jesus just dropped the project. Jesus shit wasn't bad. That shit was good. I didn't say it wasn't bad. I didn't I didn't say nobody music I just named didn't make great music. I love these names that I'm naming. I love these people. But what I'm asking you is. Is the music still making it to the number one spots like it was when they were in their prime? I mean, of course not, no. But why you got to say, of course not? I mean, like... Because some yeah, people yeah, still yeah. work. No, it's some niggas that's like, the anomalies like Jay-Z, like when he dropped... That See, that's what I'm trying to say. Crazy. So when you got something to compare and contrast, that shit void on a lot of other shit people be saying. So again, tell me somebody from my class Who's still dropping number one records right now? I don't now. know, bro. This is this is like this is like off the top. That's I would have to, I would, I would have to say, get some homework, give me some all time. T- to- what all I'm telling you is, it happens to majority of us mm. in this thing that we call the entertainment business because people they can love you. Remember what we talked about? Yeah. But do they still like you? Mm. Do they like your sound and your music, your contributions of today? over the shit that they feel like they love today. You gotta answer that question. No, that's true. You see what I'm saying? 
That's a question you gotta ask. We, we, I'm just taking it back to what we talked about. Do I love T.I.? Yes. Do I love Jeezy? Yes. Do I love 2 Chainz? Yes. Do I love Gucci? Yes. Get what? Their music may not be considered the top tier music today. Mm. They still could drop a good project. They still gonna have some great marketing. They gonna go do some great features. They got a crazy catalog where they can go do some headlines, some tours. So they still are viable. But us again, are they? Are you they hold the same weight? Does this? That's all I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not yeah. taking nothing from none of these people now that we naming. I'm not taking nothing from none of them. They all viable. They all credible. But is it cutting through the way it was six years ago? I mean, okay. maybe not. That's a hard question, though, because a lot of this it shit really to me ain't, no. ain't cutting through like it was 10 years ago. A lot well, of it. Well, that's because, it again, we're me. talking about evolving. So when you ask me about how do you feel about this, I watched niggas that was coming up. I was around a lot of niggas, and I watched them get hot, go up, chill out, disappear. I watched it. So many errors. So many every year. It's like, damn, bro, I just, I ain't seen bro in a minute. A song come on, you be like, damn. I forgot about bro. I ain't heard that shit in a minute. Cause everybody don't get a run where they got at least 10 hit records. Everybody don't get that run, bro. Mm -hmm. Some niggas get one good ass song and some features. Some niggas just get a cool little buzz. But they've been buzzing so long, it's just a, it's, you know them. And you know the music. And no, some niggas like, just ride that way all the way until the goddamn wheel fall off. And there's some people I was talking like younger artists. It's some people who like who don't even get super popular, but it's super successful in the music industry. Well, today is different too. <clears throat> today is different. You know, we used to have to go and do a promo run in these cities, and the labels have to spend this money and move you all around, do these promo runs so people can see you. You know what I'm saying? Now, nigga, you shit, shit. You put the music out to people. If they love you, they go right to it. They do the, they promo it for you. You go to TikTok. You ain't got to do shit. The artist, the next thing you know, you give it to somebody. You give it to these influencers. Somebody got to dance to it. Somebody doing something crazy to it. And now it's the, it's the number one song on TikTok. Now it grow legs from there. And now boom, 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 it's that radio. Now boom, it's in the clubs. Or it's in the it's TikTok clubs, radio, then boom, everywhere. You know, it's it's different. Now people are breaking records you never heard broke before. No, facts. Because they could get the music differently. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of shit that's being broke. I've been hearing comedians making songs that's crazy. Like, it's so many, like, so much shit going on. Right Bro, now. it's just a different day and age. How you get the product out. That shit is crazy right now. You about to drop a movie? What's the name of the movie again? The movie that's out, right? It's out. <clears throat> it's a project. It's called, it's a series anthology series it's called i got a story to tell my episode on there is gas station pill y'all gotta go check that out it's good it's really good you just you, you in it you gonna say that of course you gonna say it. no it's really good it's really good i ain't gonna even lie to you it's good it's entertaining you about to take this acting shit to the next level i'm dead serious about it that's why you offer me something to drink i decline Oh, you so you trying to get a like the the fit role? It ain't about a role. I just I need to be in shape. I'm not. <clears throat> bro, when I came, I was 25 years old. I'm not that young kid no more. And I wasn't a kid at 25. Right. You get what I'm saying? I was already married with a family, bro. At 25, it's a lot of us that you ain't thinking about that at 25. Yeah, thanks. You got all the components to have that family, but you ain't you ain't doing that. Yeah. So, you know, I've been grown for a long time, man. I want to be healthy and I want to look at too. Good night, be man. I, I got fat. I got in shape. I got oh, fat. Man, got in shape. Like you fat. I'm saying, I done, like but I don't. I don't did it. I, but I'm saying it's a fluctuation. <laughs> Sometimes that's how it be. You know, I done got in shape. Let it go. Fuck it. I don't want to do it no more. Get fat. Ugh. I don't like how I look. I don't like how I feel. Go get back in shape. Do it again. I done did it a couple times. But this time I'm like I'm older, so it's it's a little harder. Nah, facts. I'm gonna keep it a book. When I say it's harder, cause it's it, it's more challenges for me. It's like some days I just want to chill, but I'm like, facts. no, you gotta push yourself because I'm everywhere. I'm looking around, people are dropping dead around us, bro. Mm, mm, mm. 
from things we call natural causes. That's true. And it's really not natural causes because it's the shit we consume and the shit we put in our body every day, all day. Bro, it's crazy. I, um, it was a time where like I used to love working out. Now I had to hire a trainer so they could hold me accountable because like I, I've never been enjoyable. able to see results without a trainer. Yo, I needed a trainer. Every time I've ever gotten in shape, I had to have a trainer. And my trainer cool. Like I feel like I could do all of that shit. It's just the fact that he called me like, "Yo, I'm downstairs." All right, bet. All right, you gotta go. I gotta go. Get your ass up. Why not? Fact. So like, I just pay for that to be honest. So like, that shit is. That shit is crazy. It works for me. I mean, they looking at you. They mm. like, all right, boy, you got down legs. I ain't matching your top. You doing legs today? Mm. Cause they know, you know, you gonna do your chest, you gonna do your back, you gonna do legs or whichever rotation you got. But right. you know, you gotta have the separate days for each one. That shit got my nerves, bro. Yo, what got you on the radio? What, like, cause I came from radio. I I say what I want to say off camera, but I don't know. You, you like didn't, that? You shit? didn't see going into radio, did you? Huh? You you can't see it. Uh, I feel like. See, to some people, radio is just cool. It's a, it's a people right now that's living an amazing life just doing radio. Yeah, I know. But we look at them, we like, bro, on radio. Like, okay, you doing radio? No, nah, successful, I... but. It's radio. No, no, nah, nah, I don't look that. at it like that. No, no, no. I'm saying I, some people do. Oh, yeah, I'm see, I, I got a different perspective because I did radio before. I feel like niggas like you got a cheat code. Like, niggas that got... Oh! Oh, yeah, for sure. How, what's the cheat code? Because I ain't have to go to school? No, hell no. Like, what? So what is, I'm saying, because cause some people will tell you, bro, you didn't have to go to school for this shit. You didn't have to get a degree. You didn't have yeah, to... I think that's an old... That's like a probably 10-year like argument now. That's old. But some people still feel that way. For real? Yeah, I, ain't, I wasn't thinking about that. That wasn't. It's just like thing. comedians right now. Like, bro, you ain't pay your dues. You just got hot on IG, and then you out here on the circuit. You taking money out of these real seasoned comedians' vets' lives. You, you so, kind of get what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm on, so I'm borderline on that. On that. See, me is like because niggas got names. So like, of course you can come in here and get. You feel me? Like, bro, you. you now watch shot. this. What's your name? Jay Hill. Right. You making your name, right? Not for sure. You making your name, right? Not for sure. So now if you you keep blowing this platform up and you go back to radio and you done made your name, is that the cheat is that a cheat code? I mean Nah, is it a cheat code? Because you had to you had to build your name on a whole other platform. Sure. With no cheating in that no cheating involved. You became who you became from another angle and you leveraged that shit into a whole nother industry or a whole nother sector of the industry. Ain't no fucking cheat code about that. You you paid your dues in one area, and you were able to, you were able to use the equity of your fucking hard work already and leverage this shit off on I this hate side. Niggas like you, so logical. You should let me hate on a love niggas like no. Me. Let me let me hate on a, on the superstars. No, a you cannot. I hate niggas that just make all these hit songs and just come in. Like, I'm gonna do a podcast. Fuck you, nigga. But why? <laughs> But why? Cause, Cause he didn't pay his dues in the podcast side of things. No, I'm just hating. No, I'm just hating. Okay. Let me hate. I mean, you're doing a good job at it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just like, it made so much sense. So you mean if you tell me you work so hard and you and you and you get that hand and then you just come over here, you ain't work for it. It's like ah, now it makes sense. But it's like, but see, because you did radio. That's a shit, but watch this, because you did radio. Guess what? It's way easy for you to do this. So what about when the podcast gang gets so big? Mm. It's gonna be podcasters who gonna feel the same way because you came from something else to this. Because at the end of the day, it's all leveraging what you got. That's what. That's all this shit about, bro. If you ain't leveraging what you got, then you ain't got shit. That's a fact. So you like it though. You like enjoy it. I enjoy that shit. You gotta say that because you gonna get. You, they gonna see. That. I enjoy it. Guess what I get to do? I talk. get to talk to millions of people every day. Hey, live. Mm. See, you talking to me live. Watch this. You're talking to me live. That's a cool job. I get to do what you do in this part of it. I get to talk to the people that I love, respect, admire, even aspire to be like. I get to do the same thing, right? But your shit going to be recorded and played back somewhere as a video. We're going to watch it. But now I gotta go in the comment section just to get some back and forth dialogue and traction. But I get to talk on the radio to people that love me and I'm showing love to them. I love these people that love me. 
I get to talk to them. I get to meet them. People walk up to me some days and just be like, out the blue, hey, man, what you said this morning, that shit helped me and my mama. We was in the car riding, and you said some shit, man. My mama just started crying, bro. Mm. And I, when I'm trying, I ain't, I got scared. I pulled up. I'm like, what's wrong? What happened? Man, she was like, she just told me some shit that she never thought she could tell me. And it, it, she, it broke her heart to tell me, but she had to tell me. And that shit grew me up right there on the spot. I get people walk up and tell me shit like that. And I be like, damn. And, I, and you don't be expecting that shit to come out the blue. But that shit, it, it, it tells you that your heart in the right place. Mm. And this is working for you. Because what we do should not just be about money. It's so much stuff we could do for money and not love it. I love what I do. I love the team I got every morning. I love the benefits that come with it. I love my freedom with it. I love the fact that enough people fuck with me enough. I'm sorry, I'm cussing. You good. I do morning radio, I know <laughs> I enjoy the thought of people being able to ride in their cars or whatever with their family by themselves, with their significant other, and actually have conversations with me and with with each other about what I may say, what I may have said to them. I enjoy that. That's just a that's just my side of me loving people. I'm All a right. philanthropist. I got a love for life. You know what that's I mean? That's dope. That's dope. I think uh forty two got you um got you traumatized. Because the first thing you when I said radio, first thing you went to like what you didn't think Niggas getting money or something like that. Nah, because you came from radio. Yeah. But you thought I was about to like want some 42 nah, shit. I wasn't I even going there. Mm -mm. That's the first thing you went like. No, I, I I started thinking about whatever the fuck you went through in radio. <laughs> I was like, damn, it didn't work out. Nah, fuck no. See? That's why you feel I, like I, that about it. Fuck. So that's why I said, because I mean like, because if it was making, a lot, making you a lot of money, would you have walked away from it? Um, That's, I mean... Mm. It's easy to say what you would have did. So I can't I'm, just, I'm, I'm just asking a question. I don't know. Was the money great for you when you was on radio? Nah, it, not really. But it wasn't really the money for real. The like, money. the money ain't great for me with this yet. Like, it ain't great. I mean, it's cool, but it ain't great yet. You feel me? But I can see the potential. But you can see the potential. Yeah, Amen. radio, I ain't see no growth. It was Amen. like, niggas stepping on you. Like, no. Yeah. We got the old niggas at the top. These niggas is doing morning show. Fuck you, young niggas. See your trauma? <laughs> that's how it was. So I just internalized what you said. Like, I ain't, I, I, that's another conversation. I, it was like, ooh, you got it's, it's, You heard about that radio shit a little bit. Just a little bit. I could tell. You said it. Fuck them niggas. Yeah, see? That is. I could be hurting shit. Yeah. You, you going to say some, no, nah, because, man, this shit, it, 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 that shit don't matter. That's what you want to nah, say. Nah, I ain't gonna you're say like, none of that. This shit, everybody just, know I'm, that a time coming is gonna pass. Nah, but you brought, <laughs> why you bring 42 Doug in this conversation? Because you said something about being broke, and I'm like, bro, I ain't I didn't say that. nothing about being broke. You was broke. like, you ain't think I was gonna do radio? I'm like, no, 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 no. You wanna associate that with radio? Like, bro, no. No, I'm just, totally different. I'm just asking a question. Because some people don't. I'm just, I just went to where I used to, I, I knew a lot of people that was on radio, mm. and I didn't know they were making a lot of money. Right, I wasn't. I wasn't thinking about money. Either. I didn't know that, bro. I mean, I'm just saying yeah. it ain't. But I think about because when you said it, I think about everything I gotta do to do radio, and it's a lot of work. Mm. You kind of get what I'm saying. So I really, I, when you when I looked at what you, the face you made, and what you said, I was like, maybe you don't you don't fuck radio because all the work you had. To do, oh no, nah, no, nah, and nah. it didn't make enough money for all it the work money. you do. No, nah, I wasn't money. Cause it you gotta money. think it's different. Watch this. This ain't got nothing to do with no forty two dollars, nothing. But I know I can go do a show. Maybe two shows. I'm gonna make more in two days out of the month would make more money than I'm gonna make in the month of my radio paycheck. So I got to have some other kind of passion to do that. Mm. I could do enough shows to where I could have more freedom and not be up in the mornings every morning to gotta talk and do all that. I can have the freedom of just chilling and do that and and it was still I still make more money than I make it radio. So it didn't have nothing to do with that. Mm. You just love that shit. I just, I, I, it happened. Nah. You know what I'm saying? It just happened. And then I feel like they be trying to finesse. Like, the whole, the whole syndicated shit, I used to want to do that. And then it hit me that they really just saving money by, like, not sp not paying each radio jock in each region when they could just pay one person 
a significantly less amount of money to you to be in all of the regions. Like for me, it's like a finesse. Like I don't like that's why it ain't really it ain't the money. Just I just think they be finesse. You guys ask yourself what you willing to deal with, bro. That's why you don't fuck with it no more. Yeah. I thought it was an interesting conversation. But now, man, I appreciate you for pulling up, bro. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I'm not mad, bro. I don't care, bro. I'm doing good. If I wasn't doing good, I would be mad. I ain't gonna lie. If I wasn't doing good, I'd be mad. But I just, when he talks somebody say radio, I thought it was interesting to talk about radio. This nigga got trouble. This nigga got trouble. Bro, because radio. of radio? No. A little bit. You do? Nah. Mm mm. Nigga still talking about radio. I don't. I'm saying I don't. I don't. You For shouldn't. Real. You look like you. You look like you got your shit together, brother. I got you here. You look like you got your shit together, bro. I salute you, man. I appreciate you for pulling Keep up. Going. Keep going. Keep going. Nah, I thank man. you for real. Keep going hard. Nah, man, I appreciate it, man. For the people that don't know, let them know how to follow you. All that Instagram man, shit. Man, easy, man. IG, Jot Live. All the two. Tw- I don't. I mean, you know, all across the board, man. It's it's, it's, it's real easy. Is it still young, Jock? I mean, people still say it. I ain't young like that no more. But I'm about to say, are you okay it. with that? Like, yo, young Jock. What's your name? Like, nigga, I'm just Jock. What's your name? What's your name? You know, you know, his cats be fat as a motherfucker, nigga. Name Lil D. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, I'm Big D, no, nigga. You know he is Lil D. You just got big. I don't know? think I want my name to be Lil D ever. Yeah, like you never, should. don't ever associate the D word and little please. I'm just gonna not even let my head go. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all appreciate you, man. This is a great conversation. J Hill Podcast, Mr. J Hill, Young Jock in the building. Yo. It's a wrap. We out.